Okay, so I'm st starting to record. Starting to record. Um, so for people who are paying attention, go. Um, let me go back into Zoom. Share my screen. So um, on the structure, let's uh, get to the build. So overall procedure would be, so structure for today, tomorrow we want to build a pond and um, prepare the pond for stocking. So the day, day three will be a lot of the, well, let's see, day three, perhaps the, all the biologicals, no. Pond is two, the, the build, this is the build and this is wildlife Okay, let me share my screen. Am I, are you, people sh uh, sh Can people see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. In a Zoom? Just for workflow so we understand what has to be done. So the structure, we need a, we need a whole structure. We need a pond, we need all the bio, all the, interior systems like the growing beds and everything else so as we start the pond we can also do a lot of the different structures that go into the the greenhouse as well now planting so that's day two is pond not digging we're going to build one on top so it's built over over the concrete pad as building up not building down Towers, beds, gutters, shelves, worms, mushrooms, like the structures on day three. Day four is actually populating stuff. So day four is biology. All the biological systems. Day five is the automation part. So that's, but before we go there, so we need, there's basically like the mechanical infrastructure, which is the structure and the, all the beds and, and containers and everything else. After which we can plant them up. And then after which we can start automating all that. So structure for today, and wherever we end up today is what we got for structure. <laughs> By 5 p.m., 5.00 zero zero p.m., um, lumber, we've got a pile of lumber, 2 by 8 by 16. We take three of those and put a top and bottom on it, and we can trim it to size to get to 16 feet. The panels, um, you want to cut off a little bit of, so the length ends up being 16. Yeah? Um, we need four of those. In principle, that could be quick. Four? Four for the roof. So we got a 16 by 16 structure. Should we divide up into sub teams? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you work on a flat pad, so what's the workflow like? You can have the total number we need to build. 
is 20 items. Wow. How many people are going to be out there? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten or so. We've got to build a couple if we work as singles. we got to build four if we work as doubles. If you put this thing on the ground, you can lay it right on the ground and start screwing it together. Because it's a one-person job. Yeah, I would actually say work right on the ground. We've got a nice flat pad, relatively flat. That's good enough for building things right on it. Otherwise, you have to bust out tables. These things are too long for tables. Like 16-footer is a little too long for tables. Uh, most convenient, quickest to build stuff right on the ground. So we take, we screw up the frame to four foot by six. Four foot by six is we need twelve of those. Uh, so we should get get the, the cards out for a scrum board and uh, get tasks on. Get names to those. So four by six or four by eight. Four by six. There's four four by eights and twelve four by six. Mm. So. Let's build build the greenhouse right here. That's gonna be the front. And building the greenhouse is as easy as no pads. Or it will be after today. Uh, blue for the roof, which are four by sixteens. That's the long roof sections. How tall is the uh, water thing we're in the build, the pool? Two feet at least, so two feet from the ground. We could use two two by twelves. We can look at the calculations for the volume. We want we want enough at least two two totes equivalent. At least two totes. I just want to make sure we have space for the five foot towers above the pool. We're gonna have plenty of space for that. We can possibly have it. yeah, we'll have we'll have enough. Okay. Five plus Oh yeah, it'll in fact be just the right size. Now we can actually dip the towers into the water as well, but it wouldn't hurt it. Um, are we using towers that are we already have, like the ones stored? We have towers. We we can make more just to see, so you see what it means to build one. So we can take a piece of four inch tubing, slid it into the procedure for how we build those. Um, if you have a greenhouse that's got light from all sides. You can grow all around the structure. Like some things are low light intensity, or like when you're just starting as a seed, you kind of want the shade, so you can actually plant things on the back. When you're growing, like you need the full sun, most likely you want to do the front. But our our towers, you can put holes all around it. We, we just got like two rows towards the front on one the model that we have right now. Okay. So six. The yellow is going to be all six foot. Tall. So we're going to have four more here on the sides to get to the 16 length. Markers. More markers. People, does someone else want to come up and put names or put it on? Names. Let's let's get names. As I'm driving up. Who wants to do what? Four by eight. Four by eight panels. It'll be pink in the back. I want to do cut. I like to work on a roof panel. Christian, write it down. Okay. No, no, I'm with us. We're taking these to the workshop uh, or to, to wherever we're working and we're going to hang up a board. Oh, we've got a board in the workshop. We might bring that board out there or something. So we just have a visual representation for coordination.
I don't know if we're doing the roof panels and the wall panels at the same time. But yes. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, as it's as many people as we have to do them. So do we agree on doing one person per or two people teams? Because you can lay it on the ground and just screw it in. All you got to do is hold. At least two people teams, I would say. Because it would take two people to do something less than it would take one person half the time to do it. I know this is Yeah. Uh, typically, it's trying to hold it together and all that. I mean, we, we built plenty of modules before. We made, like, built like 48 of them for the, the house over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's possible to do it by yourself. Sometimes you need to hold the board so they don't uh, line it up cor correctly. Right, between trying to hold and screw in, I think that's going to be very inefficient for one person to do. One yeah, thing. I don't mind doing it myself, but, but uh, let's see what the machine we get. If you're skilled, I don't think there's an advantage of one or two persons, from my experience. Yeah. I've, I've For example, just I mean, just some things. Okay, so say you gotta hold two pieces together. You need a third hand for the screw. Well, you got your four foot long end, pre-drill, pre-screw the, the yeah. holes, put it on, you screw it right into the next one. Yeah. If that thing is heavy by gravity, like a 16 footer, it's not gonna move. You hold it like that, and you screw it because the screws are already in there. Um, I think the case can be made. Huh? Maybe we should catch that on video sometime for what the actual requirements are for one person, two people, four people. Mm -hmm. How fast can one person do it? How fast can two, three, or four? Those are all, like, that would be, like, rigorous data to get. Okay. So, so teams. Modules? Modules. Yeah, I'd love to do it modules. Uh, do we have that working doc? Uh, yeah. Spec that out with the measurements. Yeah, page two. Right. Um, look at the, you can look into the zoom. It's yeah. on page two, or go to my log for the working doc. I'm not. I have it up. And here's a scavenging team. We have to bring all the materials off from Katrina's house. And then the cutting. Well, let's bring the okay. The saws are out at the seating hall two. No, they're not. We just brought the one, and then we got the other one, the big one. Sliding miter for the ends of the so the wood is going to be a different length than what we need initially. So when uh, uh, you can use that, that's not going to get you a straight cut as as the sliding miter. You can't you can't do that. If we you have the sliding miter. Yeah, two of them. No. Like the other should one do two. Stuck with all the time. Let's take it down because uh, possibly, well, uh, it will well, probably help. But one little thing: uh, the height of the modules on one side is eight feet, but that means the lumber should be ninety-three inches, right? It's three inches off. Yeah. For the top. Yeah. It's uh, it's not editable. The working doc. So um. Do I have to call it greenhouse dock? It's not editable. I have it editable. Okay, I'll just refresh. Wait. Yes, when you say 4 by 8 that means the frame ends up being that. That means you got... Do you guys know the lumber? Lumber? Right, there's lumber comes in 96. We got 96, but they probably are 96 in a little bit. We've got to typically trim them down. This is they're one and a half inch thick. That will be one and a half in the bottom, one and a half. So they need to be three inches shorter mm. to get those top yeah, plates okay. and make it eight feet in total. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Cut list. I mean, now, is it possible for the short uh, runners to be um, on the side of the longer ones, so that you don't have to cut the longer ones? Because you already have to cut the shorter ones to the size. So if you make them smaller and attach them to the side of the uh, eight foot one, then you shouldn't necessarily have to cut, cut as much down. Yeah, we, we, we work, have it standardized by now, so we probably yeah. just follow that. Well, the other thing is that the, the glazing is going to not reach to the end, okay. if you do that. So. Yeah, who else? I'm, I'm doing cutting. I'm doing all know. 
sure? Yeah, but um, cut cut one and build one. Like we'll get confused, and I would just do cut one and build one. For a cut, you need like four cuts, one, two, three, yeah, but I think four, five cuts per module. Ends up ends up being like a bottleneck because everybody's gonna be able to start trying to cut. So again, yeah, I think one person cutting makes sense because then you get into the zone and really. Yeah, but we have two miter saws. Two miter saws. There's a cord cordless one too, or circular saws for others who want to do it. Yeah. Um. It's really nice if one person cut up as much as possible. But yeah. So we need 48 inch. Um, that's two by six. So remember that the four, four by sixteens panels. Those are two by eights. So not the two by six. So uh, two by eight lumber. We'll leave this this green one here. Uh, if you look at four sixteen is for four pieces of sixteen feet, right? Because we should probably write write them differently instead of four by sixteen. Or well, in brackets, it's in the brackets is the quantity of panels. Yes, but within the picture of the of the roof panels. Mm. Edit it. Yeah, but I, I was asking first if that was the sure. Every, t every width here is 48 inches, so we're kind of like standard. So think about 4 by 8 panels, 4 by 6 panels. So we, we got a bunch of 48 inch 2 by 6. We got a bunch of 48 inch 2 by 8 for the top, for the roof structure. We've got a bunch of 9. 93 inch 2 by 6 that's 8 of those because that's for the back walls 2, 4, 6, 8 we have 24 uh, if we're doing 6 feet that's 72 minus 3 is 69 69 inch 2 by 6 Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many of the 48 inch 2 by 6? That's going to be 16 times 2 is 32. Yeah, but it's more than 8 because those things have a vertical down the middle. The back ones? No. The, the back side. ones we don't have to no. really. I mean, <clears throat> front and back. I mean, for the purpose of what we're doing here, um, it's it will be sufficient to do because we're doubling up the studs at the equivalent of two two foot spacing for two by sixes. So structurally, it's sound. The issue there was uh, in terms of like wind and uh, wind will kind of be wind will be knocking this thing around. Um, so we should actually I don't know like do the triple ones in in the middle. It's better for structure. Uh, it's not too much more work, so maybe. Yeah, it was for the code's sake, right? It, we're gonna do it by the code, yeah. by the book, or yeah, like by, like by normal. Yeah. Upper yeah. <laughs> You're gonna make this in a street cab? Yeah, we could do it. I think by now we just need to map out all the cups we need, and. Well, no, we're not gonna do it right now in free cab, but. Yeah. So, yeah, think about the double, yeah, the middle, middle stud everywhere. Okay, so if we've got three, so it's more than eight, it's uh, 12, 93 two by sixes, and it's uh, 36 of these. 
if we want to do the proper way. And what else are we missing? Uh, 32, six, 16 times 2, yeah, just pull the rain and 8. Rain. We need 8 of these. We need 12 of the 189 inch 2 by 8. What's that? That ends up being 16 feet with the top and bottom. So 182, 189 plus 3 is 192, which is 16 feet. So 12 of those. So just for reference here, those are. 12, 12 2 by 4 by 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 of those, this, this number here. We need 12 of those, right? Because 4 modules times 3. Where did the 189 come from? Where's it's 16 feet minus 3 inches. Minus 3, okay. Okay. Something like that. Where the uh, 3 inches? Minus 3, why is minus 3? <coughs> For the top and bottom. One and a half inch lumber on the top and on the bottom. So, on the ends. So you got 189 plus 3. Just like you got 93 plus 3 is 96. So it's 3 under. Well, okay. This is actually uh, 35 because there's one door in there. Remember? No, no. No? Uh, how are you going to get in there? Ah, sorry. I blocked the door. <laughs> uh, do, we move, do we make the door on the side? In fact, why don't we go and make, no, why don't you return that, regain that, and let's make a door at the back. Um, yeah? Door at the back? Taller door. Oh, a taller door, it's eight feet. It's plenty to get in if you've got a four by six. Well, no, actually four by six, that gets a little tight. So, door on the back. Let's do a door on the back. So, we're gonna remove so it's going to be 11 93 inches. And for that, we should follow the... Uh, That's the door. Door aperture module, or just make it... Frame out. it in rough first. Uh -huh. Just do that. Let's get that up. We'll fit in the door later. Um, we can do the door later. That's getting a little... That's, that requires more detail. How are we doing the corners? Or which, which side is on the... Okay. So for corners... We're not cutting down anything. That that means we're going to have to build in triangular uh, triangular section at the one side and the other side because we're going to have 5.5 .5 inches. It's going to be like, um, yeah, we can do one of two things. One is you can do a triangular section on the very end because right now we're 16 feet uh, and we're sticking out the side walls on the outside of that. So in other words, we have 16 feet and 11 inches total for the length. So that top area, we can either do, we can either do like close that off with a triangular shaped, triangular shaped cuts, in which case you're gonna have like a step on the edge. Can people see this? Okay, so let's draw, uh, yeah, let's draw that. Uh, slide, duplicate slide. So what's the, um, let's take a look at the edge. Oh, yeah. I think it's time to work. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the, that's how the, the profile of the side is going to look like. It's going to be a long triangle, right? Uh, so that's the side view. Side view of roof. What do we fill in there? Would you typically just like cut? Yeah, what we would do, uh, yeah, you can just make OSB, four OSB panels or like, not like glazing. We would want to cut the glazing panels. 
cut so you want more light in there um, but it's uh, from the front view it looks a little different and looks like so if you do front view you're actually gonna have like a little step so if that's 16 This is what it's going to look like from the front. You have the roof sections going up, and there's that bite taken out the side, right? Because does that make sense? That's the front view. I don't know. That's the top. Front view of the front view, like profile. Does that make sense? So what we do there? Well, we we build up this triangular piece that's actually two by six. So do a two by six a triangle that looks like it's going to fill in that space. And therefore, we can put a flat sheet over there on the outside. Because right now at that corner detail, you don't have much to screw into. There's nothing to screw into. So you want to do this side, side roof, which actually has um, like every so often you have places to attach siding to so you need like three of these supports minimum to catch the edges of your siding so like uh, do yeah um, what, what would you think of like a geodesic dome or like other geometries for a greenhouse it's a great idea that's the kind of stuff you can do with 3D printed connectors. The cutting of the, if you have 3D printed glazing, it's good. If you, if you don't have 3D printed glazing, that's impossible to close up. It's too much cutting, I mean, a lot of cutting. Uh, I put an arrow there. Is that measurement correct or is it supposed to be eight feet all the way to the top? To, to the very top. Okay. So uh, it's six to the front. We're cutting into the module to create the grooves for, for the outside. Uh, There's the no cutting into triangle. No, here's. No, no, no. So the walls here are like this. So that's the outside wall, looking from the front, because you just put that next to, next to the. Yeah, yeah, kind of. You see what's happening there? Yeah. This stuff is missing, and we've got. What we've got is the four panels. That's one panel here. That's the roof panels looking from the front. Right? Because the there's four panels here. This these are the four panels like that. Tell you what, we can build it without the sidewalls and that will make sense, right? Once you start adding the sidewalls you have to shrink the, your side walls, you have to cut them down, but for sake of time, let's just put them outside so we have to shrink one of them by 11 inches. See what I'm saying? Which is the thickness of the 2 by 2 by 6. Uh, so if you put them on a side, do people follow that or not really? Not quite. Um, get rid of this, get rid of that, let's get rid of that. This is what what we would build if you have if you're constructing your greenhouse out of plain panels, this is what you would build. That. Straighter than that. These are roof panels. These are front wall. Right? Can you understand that? Does that make sense? Hang on a second, I'm trying to get you on the Roof. Um, can you get the big screen? Yes. So sidewalls are these extra modules here. If we're not cutting them down, they're not going to fit between the front and back wall. Or they will fit and the roof will be too short because the roof is 16. So that's the sidewalls, those, those vertical ones. The front walls are far like that, roof directly on them. And there's 
a set at the back. So if you go, you show that here. So that's the back. Yeah, that's the side view. And that's the front. Now these back ones go all the way to the top, so the top panel can rest on them. So that's what we have. That's the side view. Uh, this is the front view. If that makes sense. We didn't account for what's going on at this wall. That wall space is less than 16. Your four modules will not fit there, so we're just putting them outside. If you put them outside, they fit right there on the sides. It still closes the structure, but it gives you that, that edge thing. For which case, you make this triangular truss. Just this triangular thing. You could do a, yeah, you have to do this triangle, long triangle out of two by six. So you got four studs, right? So with four studs. Two, six, two, eight. Are we going to do that? So just the roof is eight. Everything else is two by six. So roof is two by eight for the structure, so we can hang towers, which are going to be very heavy. Like we're going to hang like a ton of stuff over the roof, mm -hmm. of the roof at the end of the day. So this kind of a design actually works for this hanging tower business. Okay. Yeah. Does, Does that, that make sense? sense? Can we go off this, yeah. or that's not detailed enough? Yeah, but like, uh, so each, uh, each, each wall is a module, right? Each module is a module, yeah. <laughs> and the side... There's a top plate. We want to put a top plate in there, yeah. too, because it's going to be nice to bond it all together. They'll stand up very nicely. Uh, as far as the, the soap plate, I don't know. I would say just connect them together, bond them with a top plate. Don't worry about the sill plate. We can put in some um, concrete nails or something into that. We can, we can. It's more steps and time and daylight's burning. Uh, how about the connection of the corners? Are the side walls on the outside, like in this picture, and on the outside of the roof? Uh, the corner connection, the side wall connection to the front wall. Yeah. Because I did this little okay. thing, I'm, so let's arrange it no. the way it should be. Uh, what you have here on the front wall is you would have screw in to the stud of that one. So you would have, uh, instead of that, you would actually have, um, this is what you actually have. So you can get a screw, right? So that's the... I'll point out which is side and which is front. That's front. Okay. So this is the wall module that's here. It's part of this wall module. No. So if you observe, so that's that's going to be your wall module here. It's got a stud there, right? And this this wall module is this here. I'm not drawing all the details, just the that's the wall module here, right? So there's this stud here and that stud there. Yeah. There's a connection point there, so you can go right from that to so you go like this. Uh, you go take a three inch screw and go like that. Emphasize for emphasis. Mm -hmm. Screw that in to, into the, the like stud the, here, like that. You're doing that. Okay, for, each corner. for now, yeah, we're fine for this, for this structure. Yeah, for each corner, a simple thing. Um, if you want to do it prop more properly, you do it like in the house. If you want a more strong connection, so this will will not hold up in tornadoes, like 90 mile per hour winds, but it will hold up until the winter, uh, through the winter. Um, if we have enough, well, once again, the capping of the, well, the top plate. I mean, the top plate makes it pretty solid. So when we put on the side walls, we want to connect the top plate over the sidewall, and that will bond it together pretty well. Uh, top plate is a piece of two by two by six. Um, there it is. So that's our top plate. It's going to go across the whole thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we can act, we actually have, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll Chris says, are we doing it eight feet or six feet? So any questions on what the structure of the greenhouse looks like? All six feet. All six feet. Or does it make sense? No, no, the back, the, the front is eight feet. I have front is six feet, back is eight. Okay. Two. So you got a slope to the back. Yeah. So you can make it to the back, but you get less, less, more sun reflected from the slope being the other way. Almost get as much in, but not as much sunlight. And the pink is the back? Pink is the back, yeah. The pink <clears throat> corresponds to eight feet. All the yellow is six feet. The roof is all 16 feet long. So you're effectively cutting pre-cut studs for the 16 module, six module, eight module, in terms of height. Like you, you're doing top and bottom plate, with that distance, so that the total ends up being either eight feet, six feet, or sixteen feet. Does that make sense? Yeah. According to the front you be, Yeah, you're making six foot modules, eight foot modules, primarily six. So if you're making a six foot module, cut your wood to ninety three inches. No, sixty nine. Yeah, sixty nine, which is three minus and forty eight all the way. Forty eight width everywhere. Yeah. Piece of cake. Absolutely. Uh, I have two theoretical questions. Let's discuss them as we take, let's take the uh, let's get the, the glazing off the top part of it. Do you know where the lump is? This thing's up to five cameras. Am I kidding around? This is yours? 